In 24 hours time, SpaceX will carry its first all private crew to the International Space Station. It's another feat for Elon Musk's space company and for Texas startup Axiom, which pulled the whole mission together. But tensions in space are high after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Ed Ludlow joins us now from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So Ed, what do we expect? What's this gonna be like? Yeah, it's going to be similar to the crew missions that SpaceX has already flown for NASA for NASA astronauts, right? It's a 20 hour journey from here at Kennedy Space Center to the International Space Station. The crew, four civilians, as you said, four private members, three of which paid a reported $55 million per seat to do so. They'll spend eight days, if all goes well, up at the International Space Station doing scientific experiments. but. It's also a bit of a holiday, right? The way I'd explain it is that SpaceX is the carrier, the launch carrier, the rocket provider, and Sp Axiom is basically the travel operator, the travel agency that you book this through. But their, their ambitions at Axiom are much greater, and there's a lot of discussion right now about the long-term lifeline of the ISS and whether a private constellation, a private space station is the way to go, and that's what Axiom wants to achieve in the long run. What do we know about the crew? Yeah, the crew are interesting. The, the, the first member, Michael Lopez Alegria, is a former NASA astronaut. He did three shuttle missions and one mission to the ISS on a Russian Soyuz rocket in his career. He's now a vice president of business development at Axiom. But the others are essentially high net worth individuals, right? Entrepreneurs, investors. Larry Connor is a, a real estate magnate, for example. Mark Cathy is a music entrepreneur in the music industry. And then the, the, there's an Israeli member of the crew, Aiten Stibe, who is a former Israeli Air Force pilot turned investor. And as I said, according to the Washington Post, $55 million a seat is what they paid to get on. But they're space enthusiasts and inventors. And there's a uh, Russian crew on the ISS now. Hopefully none of them are nihilists. Um, what's, right. what's the reaction right. expected to be? Well, NASA executives, right, in the run-up to this launch, which has been delayed several times, have been peppered with questions about that. It, for want of a better description, there's a US-European half of the International Space Station, and there's a Russian half. And there are three Russian astronauts or cosmonauts on board. And the question that NASA keeps getting asked is, will these civilian private astronauts venture over to the Russian side and say hello? Because things are tense. Um, Dmitry Rogozin, who's the head of Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, said at the weekend that the economic sanctions placed on Russia the trade sanctions could lead to a situation where Russia just pulls out of the ISS. You know, the ISS costs NASA $3 billion a year to upkeep and develop. It only has a limited life to 2030. And there is concern that if Russia pulls out, they pull the funding for that project with it. Ed, you've been down there for a few launches already. Um, what's the weather look like? Right. What's the possibility that this, that this happens? You know, I'm here keeping a straight face, I'll be honest. Just look at the sky. You know, <laughs> SpaceX tell us that as of this morning, there's an 80% favorable weather conditions, which is jargon for the weather looks good. It, it doesn't look good where I'm sitting. I mean, I'm here in thunder and lightning all around me. It's been raining pretty constantly. But here on the Cape, things do change really quickly. And the window tomorrow, 11.17 a.m. Eastern time, is what they call an instantaneous window. In other words, if they don't launch then, they won't launch until the following day or a later date because they need to align the trajectory to get that crew to the ISS. By the way, how much more expensive is this kind of launch getting with the uh, rise in fuel and raw, raw materials costs? Yeah, it's interesting. I don't have a number for you, but you know, one of the ambitions that SpaceX have had for a long time is to bring kerosene production on site. That is the propellant that SpaceX uses for Falcon, as opposed to hydrogen and oxygen like um, Blue Origin uses. But it's expensive. They basically bus it in, and the fuel is, you know, is the most expensive part of the rocket burning through that propellant in terms of a cost permission anal permission analysis, that's really the consideration. So I don't know the real terms dollar impact, but SpaceX say it is an impact. And you know that they've raised prices for other launches, like their satellite launches for third party customers because of those supply chain pains.